Okay, here we go. Fast, action! It's been terrific looking with Ken Branagh. He was the main attraction for this, only makes it easier. I mean, he's a wonderful director, you know, he's, he's got that rare ingredient of being not only a great actor, but a great director. And his father would be working for Bob, and I would love it if he went, I cast you out. <laughs> okay, sure. What was so interesting about Ken doing a movie like this, his background is, his character in Shakespeare, and you know, to come and do a huge you know, blockbuster type film like this, I think it was, it was genius. You should feel as though you're taking as much care with it and with her as possible, because that's what you would do. And then, uh, as, as soon as you touch down the line, and I think moving forward, because it's to do with the energy of getting back to home, yeah, sure. Getting back here. I mean, he's very, very emotionally engaged with us, and he he just has such uh, an amazing way of attacking the text from so many different angles that you wouldn't necessarily think of yourself. He just brings this whole, all these layers, brings out these things in you that you would never think about. He sort of pushes you in every single angle that he, he that the character can go. And any time it was sort of feeling like the norm, it would be like, no, 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 let's, let's, let's do something else. Let's try something else. Look, we'll do one more. Thank you. When you've got a good director like Ken Banner, he pushes you that extra mile, you know? It's very effective for you to be leaning back like that. What does it feel like if I ask you to just lean forward occasionally? They say, yeah, that's great, that's great. He's very cunning. He'll say, yeah, that's great. OK, let's do one more, just a bit more. And say, OK, and yeah, we got it, we got it. But let me just try this one more and just add this to it. But it would just be in those moments, the dramatic moments, you get there. Yeah. Just give me one look. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. OK, and any time you stop, boom. And then look back, look back, check, boom. When they go, he knows that I'm like, Give me more. Take me. Take me deeper. Take me further. You know, light a, a, um, a brighter and hotter bonfire underneath me, so that I can, I can play this scene appropriately. The kinds of things he he tells us when he directs us are so detailed and um, specific, and always demands specificity from us, which is is really great. There's still a question mark all the way through. So don't let it settle. Don't let the scene resolve at the end. Be grateful for the offer of help. But keep, keep that question mark up. This could be the end of various friendships here. Okay. Yeah. Ken's leadership is really making this a very, very unique project. It's the energy of people who like, admire, respect each other, and who debate without rancor, but with passion. OK? And I need to feel that passion all the way through. He is maybe the most inspiring person I've ever met in my life. He's another one that I creepily watch, you know, just try to soak up some of the genius. Can give me my inspiration back to be an actor again because I was beginning to think, oh, I've been doing this too long. And uh, he comes along and says, No, come on, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to work with him again. So in a heartbeat, I do it. You know. And cut. And we cut. Acting great. One more straight away, please, for uh, a bit of blocking on Josh. We met Chris Hemsworth early in the process as we explored who Thor would be. We knew when he came in for a screen test and told a story of Thor's exploits, and he did it with such relish, such fun, a sense of danger. He was able to occupy the character of Thor in a way that seemed just right to us. I am Thor Odin's son. For this film to work, you gotta love our hero. You gotta just be behind him. And Chris does humor and sorrow, strength in such an honest way. And I've never seen someone throw themselves at work like that before. He's worked really hard to make himself sort of that godly physique. He's six, three, six, four. He's very impressive looking. A physique that can take the kind of intense physical buildup we put him through. I can't tell you how exciting it was to see Chris walk out with that flowing red cape and holding that hammer. And it's like, yes, that's Thor. Here he is, he's come to life. Wonderful working with Chris. He's a great actor. We had some great scenes together. If the Frost Giants had stolen even one of these relics... They didn't. Well, I want to know why. He can deliver these lines, which are very grand, in a way that you believe. There's a moment where he's talking to Loki, and he thinks he's never going home again, and your heart just aches for him. Let me explain to Father. Father is dead. What? His natural suit as an actor is a sensitivity and a kind of thoughtfulness. So we had to push him to really uh, slice the ham sometimes in a way that Thor thought was being impressive because it was part of the very pleasing arc from a thoughtless man to a thoughtful man. Two worlds collide. Brilliant earth scientist, woman of passion, 
that allows Thor without powers to work out how he gets back home. We wanted to find somebody who fit that mold of being the love interest for a superhero, but at the same time, who you would believe is that intelligent and is that smart and can go toe to toe with every other character in the movie and in fact can lead to a, a grand discovery of what and who Thor is. And we were very lucky to get Natalie Portman. Natalie is beautiful and talented and all of the above. Working with her was a dream. Out comes this intensely living woman. Do you see it happen in front of the camera? She's really there. She's not afraid. I can't just leave him there. Why not? You didn't see what I saw. Anthony Hopkins was someone who was a fan of Ken's and thought the role would be exciting, so he was someone who was very game from the get-go. Not necessarily many actors who can easily play the king of the universe, a man who runs the entire nine realms, who also can be a military leader, who can be a father, sometimes stern, sometimes a little remote, sometimes over-demanding, and have all of those qualities live very close to each other, and he's got weight, he's like an oak tree when he stands, all of those things presented without any effort, you know, that sort quality Tony Hopkins has in abundance. I've never worked with anyone like him. There's no one who knows character, I think, better than him. Anthony Hopkins has been a kind of masterclass in a way. I remember the scene where Odin banishes Thor to Earth, and it's just the three of us in the observatory. We were doing all of Tony's coverage first. He did a couple of takes, and they were all fantastic. Like, I mean, they were just amazing. And Ken came up to, to Tony, and he said, let's just do one more before we break for lunch. On this one, let him break your heart a bit. Let me see the heart break. And he went, OK. Okay, so I come into the scene and I start sort of, you know, doing my thing and, and he's just, just silent and just starts to kind of tear up a bit. You have betrayed the express command of your king. Through your arrogance and stupidity, you have opened these peaceful realms and innocent lives to the horror and desolation of war. Everything I'd said before he started speaking, you realize that, you know, it's tearing his heart out and he's just, struggling saying these words. You're unworthy of your title! And you're unworthy of the loved ones you betrayed. And they called cut, and three or four people were crying, like, you know, <laughs> and people just started applauding. And I remember sitting there going, that's amazing, and I'm useless. <laughs> you know, it's like, drop the hammer, I'm out, you know. Someone like that takes it a little further, and it feels like a moment that illuminates something about the relationships of people. It's just very exciting to watch very talented people do their job really well. If you've had any hand in helping them, it's a big, big, big satisfaction. Cut, brilliant, thank you very much. Hi there, here's today's Daily Fact. All the films in the Marvel Cinematic Universe are split into bigger phases in which groups of films are linked to one another and in which characters make cameos in other movies. The first phase began with Iron Man, the second one with Iron Man 3, and the third one began with Captain America's Civil War. It is currently ongoing, although producer Kevin Feige said that this concept will probably change for future films. Remember to click below to subscribe or on the side for more great content.